All right, hey everyone, it's Ryan from Holden Forge. Uh, what I'm going to be doing in this video is just taking a look at one of the typical use cases for Holden Forge, which is just um, when you're facing a bet on the flop, you know, trying to figure out roughly what group of hands you want to continue with and what hands you want to fold. So making that Holden fold them decision. And, uh, you know, typically what you want to do if you want to really crunch through a ton of these situations is just sort of decide on two good pre flop ranges. So, you know, for example, I might have this idea of, well, sometimes when I play, I like to cold call with a large range of hands. Um, and the reason you would do that is if you think that your opponent will play pretty well against a three bet, but might make mistakes after the flop, um, you know, if you're cold calling a bunch of hands. So what I've just done is I've loaded in sort of a range of hands that maybe I'm considering cold calling with. So, you know, a range I'm kind of interested in testing out. And, uh, you know, likewise, I'm going to open up a opponent range that I think is representative of the type of player that, you know, I'd be playing this opening strategy against. Um, so maybe I'm going to say I'd use this against a slightly fishier player who's kind of loose and, you know, opens under the gun or something like that. Uh, and I just got those ranges from our um, downloadable library of starting hands. Um, you can actually get that uh, just at our website. Go to holdenforge.com and check out the download section. And uh, there should be a, a file called, I believe, 6 Max No Limit Hold'em Opening Hand Ranges or something like that. And uh, if you just download that and unzip it into whatever directory you want to load your Hold'em Forge save files from, you know, you'll have access to a whole bunch of these kind of pre-programmed opening ranges, which can really make your life easier when you're entering this data. But anyway, so for the time being, we've settled on our two ranges. We've got a flop entered. And, um, you know, oftentimes in the, in this these games, people have sort of like, I don't know, they've gotten a little bit wiser about their continuation bet sizes. Like back when I used to play a lot, uh, people would always be betting pot all the time. Um, but, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, I guess nowadays people have decided that maybe maybe it's okay to bet, you know, half the pot as a continuation bet on a board that's really dry. So um, I think what I'm going to do is just take a look at, you know, uh, how you would respond to like a half pot continuation bet on, you know, a few types of dry boards and see how the ranges change, you know, the ranges that you'd be employing. And, um, yeah, hopefully just quickly kind of get an idea of how this strategy you know, what, what types of hands you would be doing things with uh, if you were to play this strategy. Um, so, I mean, we basically got everything inputted here. We got the board cards, we got the bets, we got the uh, original hands. So now I'm just going to tell it to analyze, and we'll get a good baseline strategy for this dry King 8 3 board. Um, <clears throat> so here we go. Results just popped out. And um, yeah, so it looks like basically we're going to be continuing with about 60% of the hands that we uh, cold called with. Uh, it looks like the worst one is going to be, you know, about 5-5. Five, five. So so basically it looks like we're going to be continuing with just about everything that hit a piece of this flop. And uh, we're going to be also making some, I guess, floats with ace-high type hands. So ace-queen, ace-jack. Uh, we're also going to be continuing with those. Um, and if we think our opponent is likely to be making some mistakes on uh, the later streets, uh, it, it could be appropriate to call with uh, even extra hands. So, you know, maybe call with ace-jack. Um, could also float with ace 10. Um, you could consider, uh, you know, some of these suited ace high hands or maybe queen jack, I think would probably be, the, I'd, I'd actually probably go with maybe ace jack, ace 10, and then queen jack might be the order of priority that I would go here in terms of hands that I'd want to float with. Um, but anyway, so yeah, that's a good sort of baseline strategy. Uh, so I'm just going to go back. Um, one thing you can also do is if you think you're playing against a, a particular type of opponent, you can actually incorporate, you know, a read or information on the player. So, um, really fast, I'm just going to say, okay, you know, let's, let's just, um, you know, see what, how that range of hands that we were supposed to continue with would actually change if we knew that the opponent was going to be continuation betting with a hundred percent of his hands. And we wanted to, you know, take a good amount of risk on that, uh, on that read. Um, and specifically, I don't know, let's say we'll, t we'll risk like three big blinds on our belief that he's going to be continuation betting 100% of the time on this board. Um, which, you know, honestly probably wouldn't be that bad of a strategy if he thought that our range was mostly just small pocket pairs and suited connectors, uh, you know, because this board wouldn't necessarily hit us that well. Um, so, uh, yeah, in that case, it looks like you're going to be calling about 73% of the time. And uh, it did seem that uh, the ace high hands got priority over the queen jack hands. Um, you know, I might have I might have thrown a queen jack in there instead of some of these like weaker ace x's, uh, just because of sort of like uh, reverse implied odds, I guess. Uh, you know, for example, if an ace falls, um, you know, it's possible that uh, and and it hits both of you. You could be you could be losing, 
you know, a little bit of value there. But, um, you know, the computer has forecast this out over two rounds of gameplay. So unless the reverse implied odds situation really improves a lot over, um, you know, on that third round that is not being incorporated, uh, then, you know, the computer has got to be right. So maybe the queen jack float wouldn't have been as good a decision as I thought it would be, but I guess that's up to personal taste. Um, anyway, so yeah, it looks like between 60 and 70 is going to be your baseline continuation there. Um, you know, just depending on how loosely you think he's continuation betting. Uh, excuse me. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, let's take a look at a couple other flops here and then we'll tackle something more, uh, more entertaining. So, um, let's take a look at, uh, like an ace queen five board, you know, something with two high cards. How does that change the ranges here? So, uh, we'll go ahead and, uh, input that. And I accidentally actually told it to run the wrong analysis. I told it to run a restricted response to a read that was not inputted. We did not input a read there. So uh, that was a mistake. I'll go back and tell it to do an ash. <clears throat> okay, so we get our results. And um, on this ace queen five board, again, we're gonna be continuing about 60% of the time. Uh, this time our floats are gonna be kind of like these king high gut shot hands with king jack. So most of our king jacks are actually gonna be calls. Um, I guess the next best candidate would be this Jack 10 for the gut shot and, uh, you know, decent high card potential. Uh, none of these suited connectors really have much in the way. The, probably the one big difference it looks like is that on this ace queen board with two high cards, uh, we're not going to be continuing with a lot of these lower pocket pairs. Um, and you know, again, that's just probably because they kind of run a, you know, either lose a lot. Um, or I guess, I guess it's called a barely ahead way behind situation. Um, but it basically means that your opponent either beats them almost all the time. So they have either 4% equity or like, um, well, I don't, I don't exactly know the equity off the top of my head against over cards, but, uh, uh let's see. Well, six out. So, so maybe, so maybe like 70% or like 4% equity. And so if your opponent is value betting more often than not, uh, you can actually lose quite a bit of money by calling off with these uh, pocket pairs and there are a bunch of over cards on the board. Um, so, uh, yeah, so that stuff's all good to know. Um, again, if you think your opponent is going to be making mistakes on later rounds, you can go ahead and float with some extra hands. Um, but that sort of gives you the baseline idea there. Um, I guess the last board, maybe we'll just do something with a whole ton of high cards just for no particular reason. Uh, we'll just see what the uh, correct response would be on against this uh, half pot seabed. And, um, yeah, so, I mean, in this case, it's basically if you have a piece, stay in. And uh, <laughs> if you have anything that doesn't, I mean, really the only the only hand with some kind of equity that you could use for bluffing would be maybe this, like, 9-8 hand for the gut shot and uh, probably a backdoor flush draw as well. I mean, I just don't see too much potential with these other hands. Um, and, again, you know, obviously calling with a hand that has basically zero outs to improve is always a risky situation. Um and so, uh, you know, I wouldn't really necessarily expect that to change, uh, for any particular reason. Um, okay. So that gives you, I guess, a good idea of baseline strategy. We've got maybe one minute left. Um, so let's just analyze, uh, you know, a post flop situation or something. Let's say we we're playing on this board. Um, so actually I'm going to tell it to go ahead and analyze again and, uh, just crunch through this. Let's say the flop went bet call. We'll do that. Um, and let's say the turn came down and it was, uh, it was the Jack, um, and the opponent goes all in. So we're going to put on a one round analysis and he goes all in for, uh, I don't know, almost two times the pot. So I'll just go ahead and put that in. We'll see what a nice, safe, balanced Nash response would be. And, uh, <laughs> interestingly enough, it looks like we're only calling the nuts, you know, a, uh, straight, to this um, all-in push on the turn here. So maybe not the most exciting conclusion to our video, but uh, you know, good analysis nonetheless. So thanks for checking out the video and um, you know, go to the website and look around if you, any of this is interesting to you. So that's holdemforge.com. Uh, so thanks for your time, bye.